The Greater Good Science Center presents Half Full, Social Science for Raising Happy Kids, a discussion series between Dr. Christine Carter and Kelly Corrigan. So Georgia uh, draws, has been drawing the same picture for about six months. She has perfected it. I mean, it has 100 distinct parts. <laughs> and every time she does it, people flip out and they say, what an incredible flower. I think that's, that's a really great example of just how powerful praise is. So she's drawing this flower, so you, she gets the, you're such a great artist, yep. praise. But if I told her, hey, why don't you try drawing an apple or a bush or a tree? No way. No, she doesn't want to lose her special status as a good artist because that's the praise that she's getting and she knows how to get it. Let me tell you about this really fascinating study that has been replicated several times. Carol Dweck. Had the mindset been, lady. Yes, the mindset lady has been going into schools and um, giving kids a simple test. And all the kids do pretty well on it. But then she divides them into groups. And some kids, she gives them one line of praise. All the kids, she's gonna give one line of praise. Some kids, she praises their intellect. She says, You're so smart. You did great on this test. You must be really smart. Mm -hmm. um, which is very similar to the praise that you're, you know, Georgia's right, you're getting. a good artist. You're a good artist. And the other kids, she said, you did really well on this. You must have tried really hard. Right. So what's really interesting about this is just in how incredibly powerful that one line was. So then she went back to the kids and she said, all right, you can do the same simple test or you can do a harder one, um, which you might learn from. And, and all the you're so smart kids started sweating profusely and having panic attacks. And they took the simpler test. The majority of the you're so smart kids. They kept drawing the flower. Right. So they kept speak. drawing the flower. But in one study, 90% of the effort praised kids took the harder test. Right. Which is really a remarkable result. Right. Because it's not about the outcome for them. Right. That's exactly right. So it did, what we're saying here is not that you, don't, you shouldn't praise your kids. Right. We're saying you need to praise them in a really specific way. So the effort praised kids, um, they reported having more fun on these tests, mm -hmm. even when they were, weren't doing as well. Right. They wanted to take problems home to practice. But you're so smart kids don't want to take it home and practice because they don't need to practice because they're so smart. Right, right. Effort And means... if they do have to practice, then that means maybe they're not so smart. Right. Well, and another thing that I think is really compelling is that the effort-praised kids, they liked the harder problems better than the easier ones, which is so great because that's how you get better at something. You keep challenging right. yourself. Right, right. So this simple study shows how profoundly praise influence, not just how well kids did, because... But what it feels like. Right, and what it feels like, and the fun that they were having. Who right. loved learning right. versus whose intellectual confidence was a little bit shaken, who got a little nervous, right. who started to not do as well right. on a simple test. Right, because it's your whole attitude about effort. Either effort is a threatening thing because you shouldn't have to work so hard because you're so smart, right. or effort is the experience. Right. Effort is the joy. The joy is learning how to do something for the first time, trying hard, being challenged. Right, right. So praise is very powerful. Join us next time on Half Full, Science for Raising Happy Kids, when we discuss embracing your kids' failures.